think about this senior group, um, and I think about one, how talented they are, but two, uh, just how unselfish they were, not just their last year, but kind of all the way through, and, and uh, just just the where, where they were at when they started, uh, you know, playing mock up the Bulls as, as young guys in junior high, and, and just to see where they ended up. So we, you know, this is not something to take for granted. Uh, all these guys have poured blood, sweat, and lots of self-discipline and exercise and skill development and working together as a team to get to this point. Let's not forget that. And let's not forget that God has blessed this activity. We challenge our kids to do the very best that you can with your God-given abilities. Uh, to do anything less is not right. Uh, to, to be the very best you can at that activity. When we show up, we're going to show up to play. We've been put out the second round of the playoffs for my first three years, and so I think the biggest thing for me is, is trying to ensure that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not forcing things. You know, because when you want something so desperately, um, it's almost like the time you grip something, the more it hurts. And so I think the first thing that had to start with me, uh, it had to, I had to check my hand. Because that 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 part was about my ego. You know, it was never never really about any of them. They were they were just doing exactly uh, what we asked them to do, and, and uh, you know there was there was never a time we had to coach effort, never a time where we had to coach attitude. And, I mean, it makes our job a lot easier. You know, if, if that's not something that uh, that's that, that we're having to worry about. So the kids in K three all the way through the juniors. We'll never forget Kate's sitting walking in the pep rallies. Uh, they, they see him walking around campus. We were a small school, so they see him and they know um, You know, if they were able to be in a game, they, they, got, to, they, they got to see um, just a positive energy that exudes around him. He walks off the field. Uh, he's almost larger than life. You know, obviously it's relative to all the small part. really cool is is the legacy that they will leave uh, with with the younger guys in our program and, and you know everybody at our, at our school yes having success but doing it the right way the things that will last and the things that that will matter next year and the year after when they become dads and, and, and uh, fathers and all those things that, that we try to instill in them those are the things that will you know, ultimately last us more so than any victory or any, any state championship we win. Fall of 2017, we lost a really, really close game uh, at Junction City. Uh, one of the uh, more memorable games I've been a part of, even though it was a loss. And uh, I think our team and our coaching staff felt at that point in that game, there were some, some foundational pieces that took place in that game to a point we were able to uh, really lay a base and out for the things that we wanted to get done just from, uh, from the way our guys played, the way we prepared for that game, uh, the stage. Uh, there were so many things that came from that game. So I want to cite that game uh, as, as having a big deal uh, in, the, in the next three years, essentially. You know, in 2018, uh, we, we decided to go one way. So we're small school, which is a little bit unusual. So we started to go with more many players. And so um, going to, into the 2019 season, uh, we had a lot coming back because of that. But there were still some unknowns. We had pieces on the offensive line. And we're going to have Kate inside the our varsity starter for the first time. We had a scrimmage in 2019, and I'll never forget. Um, there were, play, there were a couple of plays where all the coaches were decided on the count of the pitch up and said, we got a chance to do it. Uh, it was that eye contact, it's that camaraderie, it's that, um, that which is understood, doesn't need to be explained. It was very much that feeling. The biggest piece of adversity we faced was continuing to stick to uh, the things that made us, that have made us good. I think we realized what we did well the first season, we had to do well the second season. We couldn't, just because we did well in 2019 doesn't mean we're going to be good at them in 2020, especially losing some very key seniors like our running back. And so 
um, can you prepare uh, for an opponent uh, the same way you prepare for another opponent? Whether that opponent is better or worse, or what can, you, can you stick to the things that you said were important, that we all agree upon were important uh, when we work emotionally, when we work tired, when we work angry, when we work sore? Every day. Every day in the weight room, we'd come in, we'd say, People don't think we can do it, but we're going back to back. You have to see it sometimes to believe it. We well, have to come to work and, and listen to a guy that's 34 years old uh, to try to command this ship. It says that they have, they have put their agendas and their egos aside. Um, and I think that speaks of volumes. Because if this game was about X's and O's, we would play it all the time. Uh, it's about so much more than that, and I attribute the camaraderie, the consistency, the poise that we all feel from all of us being able to be on the same page when it comes to the players. Um, I mean, they were the biggest factor for the for both seasons. I mean, they worked harder than anyone. They were in the field house in their office studying film all day, getting the game plan right. Even when we'd play teams like Booneville with the non-conventional offense, they were in there putting in extra work, asking for extra help from other coaches that they knew. And they just used all the resources they could to give us the best chance possible. And I think that was the biggest factor. Uh, this school was blessed with lots of great moms and dads and uncles and aunts and cousins and grandmas and grandpas that have been for many, many decades very supportive of the Wildcats on Friday night. Uh, their famous statement is, there's nothing like being a Wildcat on Friday night. Oh, it means everything. We have so many siblings on the team, and it really just brings everybody closer together. There's a lot of chemistry, and that's really a huge reason why we have success, is how close we are together. And a lot of that has to do with we're related to each other, and we just know each other forever. So. Because our players are able to go on to a very, very solid foundation with their family that has not just the ball expectation for them, but they have high expectations for them to, uh, to give their best and to be where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there, in whatever it is they're doing. I think it sends the message to really anyone um, that it's not a that I, I don't have to be a jerk and be a really good football player. I don't have to uh, have an elitist mindset and be, you know, top five in the class. And I think he is the example. You know, we can say those things, but when you, when you see those things acted out, it makes it that much more real for that young man and that young lady. They observe him being, you know, having so many quality intangibles on display. Uh, it does so much more for us. You see one of our kids knock somebody down in a particular tackle formation that they're in and then reach down to pick that kid up that they just tackled. Uh, in basketball, I saw Caden Sight after the game that we played against McGee. A young man was laying on the floor. All of the teammates were together. They got their ticket punched to go to the state finals of basketball. Caden walks away from the rest of his team and walks over and gets down on the floor. He's patting his kid on the back. I knew we was going because he's experienced what it feels like to be crushed with a loss. And so he was going to encourage that kid. There was nothing else he could do in the moment. They weren't ready to announce you know, bring out the ticket for the new team that's getting ready to go to the state finals. So he just walks off. He's a man on a mission. And he walks down there and gets down on his knees and he's patting his kid on the back. And I thought, that's Kate Sack. He knows what it feels like to be broken, to be lost when you give everything and you still come up short. In this case, he was victorious, but he knows what that feels like. So he was taking a moment to go do that. And I thought that is an awesome sight right there. And I went to him the next day in school and I said, okay, Zach, dude, I learned something from you every day. Here's what you taught me. 
And I said, man, we still got one more game to go. I'm gonna be ready to go. And he said, you know, nobody's not patting me on the back after that game. <laughs> In other words, I hope we don't lose. He said, we still got business to take care of. Think about that one moment, but there's a lot of things that go into those little memories and moments that 